Guys, do we need to worry about Japan again? Are we dealing with a possibility of another magnitude 9 plus mega thrust earthquake like it happened in Japan in 2011 with the Tohoku earthquake? Because we have an earthquake swarm going on there right now, maximum magnitude so far, depending on who reports it, between 6.7 and 6.9. Before I tell you more about this, have a look at this how they keep coming starting from november 9th up to november 11th there you see the bigger the circle the bigger the magnitude and they are quite a few dozens and dozens of earthquakes and of course it's concerning if you see in the aerial picture that big trench that big big subduction zone that we see there. So the earthquake swarm began last night basically in the northeastern part of Japan and we see the earthquakes here. The earthquake cluster is basically just off the coast of Yamada in Japan and it's the same general area as the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and foreshocks and aftershocks. I'll show you here the location of the Tohoku earthquake and you see where all these aftershocks, the red dots, where all that was taking place. So do we need to say ooh or do we need to say huh? Well guys, it's not that easy. These earthquakes range in depth from shallow to deep and they increase in intensity. They have increased in intensity started smaller and they got larger. So none of them were really large enough to cause an alarm on their own, except the magnitude 6.9, 6.8, 6.7, something like that. Has raised a tsunami warning um, about a, like a three feet wave or something like this. But we actually saw only a 20 centimeter wave, a wave like this. What is concerning if we look at the cluster and if we compare it to the weeks that were leading up to the 2011 mega thrust disaster earthquake, we all remember, you see the epicenter, we all remember that tsunami that followed, you see that here, and the devastation of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. And most of the people were lost, not by the earthquake, but by the tsunami. So there were similar clusters of smaller earthquakes in this region in the weeks leading up to the major earthquake. And most people, unfortunately, that's how it often, very, very often, too often goes. They didn't consider these swarms as warnings at that time. And the thing is, we're dealing with the Pacific Ring of Fire, this horseshoe ring where most of the Earth is big, big dangerous earthquakes are happening where we have the most volcanic eruptions and the probability of future major earthquakes for Japan after the magnitude 9 mega thrust earthquake in 2011, that probability has not been raised by that mega thrust earthquake. Now you might say, yeah, of course, because it has just released stress. But here it comes, guys. The probability to have another one like this has also not decreased because of the one that happened in 2011. Large earthquakes have struck along the Pacific Ring of Fire, along which Japan obviously sits in the past, and they will continue to do so in the future in some areas more often than in other areas. More often in Japan, actually, than at the Cascadia Fault, for example, on the west coast of the US and Canada. Basically, that Pacific Ring of Fire is a narrow zone around the Pacific Ocean where we see this large chunk of Earth's volcanoes and and volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. Basically, and, and the, the number is really high, 90% of all the earthquakes of the world are happening there and 80% of the largest earthquakes in the world strike along the Pacific Ring of Fire. And now many people have asked, well, is Tokyo at risk of something big? Because when that magnitude 9.0 quake happened, there was an obvious migration trend of the aftershocks 
southwards. So of course that has prompted fears about seismic activity maybe potentially creeping towards Tokyo with the aftershocks possibly increasing that mega city quake risk. So scientists don't know, I have to tell you that. But let's get back to the current earthquake swarm. Every one of you, I've seen it in the comments where you were like, Silky, did you see? Yeah, I. but with this one, I wanted to wait a little bit so that I have a broader picture. What is going on? So the question is, is that linked? Is the current swarm linked to potentially a dangerous bigger one? Well, when it comes to the Japanese authorities, they say the quake is not directly linked. I'm talking about the 6.9. It's not directly linked to the catastrophic 2011 Chihoku earthquake and tsunami event. Okay, is it still an aftershock from that? So they say, although this recent activity is serious and reminds us of the high seismic risk in Japan, especially in the Tohoku region, they say, and, and this is always like, they know that they don't know. There's currently no indication of an imminent mega quake resulting from this one. Yeah, of course, this could be just an earthquake swarm that goes away until the next one comes, but again, they can they give us a percentage of what they think could happen after that um no there is no imminent indication but what is the indication right that's the question because it is similar to 2011 but it is also similar to some other earthquake swarms that happened during that time but 6.9 <laughs> i'll get to this how high the magnitudes were the four shocks, especially the aftershocks, well, the big one had already happened, but how the four shocks were looking in 2011. Of course, then they say the situation remains under close monitoring and people that live in the area are advised to stay alert and follow official updates. I'm pretty sure they are alert. I'm pretty sure. The quakes are happening along the Japan Trench Megathrust. It's where the Pacific plate is subducting beneath the North American plate. You see here the subduction zone. Um, North American plate slash the Okhotsk plate is also involved. That's all off the coast of Tohoku. Subduction zones are always the one that causes the most trouble. And that is the same subduction interface that created the 2011 Tohoku earthquake. So we could say that in that region, the plate is still adjusting from the 2011 megathrust earthquake. So we could say stress is redistributing along the fault system, which is why we keep seeing repeating earthquakes in that same zone. And we see earthquakes, we've talked about this in the Kuril Islands and Kamchatka, Kamchatka, Still, we see a lot of earthquakes happening there. Probably the aftershock still somewhat related to the mega thrust earthquake magnitude 8.8 .8 that happened there just recently. But it's also possible that something else could result from this because that subduction zone that we're dealing with here is capable of very large earthquakes as we already have experienced. But of course, there is no clear signal right now that a big one is imminent. But uh, if we had always clear signals, these big ones wouldn't be so dangerous, right? That's the other side of the story. So what's happening right now is hopefully more likely the fault slowly rebalancing stress after the 2011 rupture. So these repeating quakes, of course, they don't automatically mean that something else is coming, that a major event is coming, but they're definitely a reminder that it could come and that it will, definitely will produce large mega thrust earthquakes again in the future. Again, what is the difference to the earthquake swarm that happened before the Tohoku earthquake? What were the four shocks? 
There were four shocks and then a noticeable increase in seismic activity, including a magnitude 7.3, two days before the main rupture. But this pattern can change. It's not that we have a pattern that is always the same because that is then the difficult part. Not every big earthquake swarm leads to a big quake and not every big quake has a clear swarm beforehand. So basically it's unpredictable, <laughs> right? We do not have a reliable pattern that lets us or allows us to say the big one is coming. The risk in this area specifically is never low, that we know. Thankfully, that 6.9 that we've seen there, no abnormalities, no injuries reported, nothing going on at the nuclear power plant in the area, and that tsunami along the northern coastal region was said to be between 3 and 10 feet but it was actually reaching something between like 10 to 20 centimeters or four to six inches at Ofunatu city in the Iwate prefecture, at the Ominato port, at Miyako, at Kamaishi, and uh, in the coastal area of Kuji. So there was a tsunami, but it wasn't a devastating tsunami, thankfully. But tsunami waves, the first wave is not always the biggest wave, by the way. So the tsunamis can continue for a few hours after the earthquake. They can hit the coastlines repeatedly and they can possibly get bigger with time. So there's still caution to be used. Of course, when for three hours, the tsunami advisory after the 6.9 quake was staying in place and people were warned to stay away from the ocean and coastal areas. And they were also told that more shaking could follow in the area. So we will have to wait and see how this develops, guys. I will definitely let you know. I hope you found that interesting, but guys, there's something rumbling underneath the tidal volcano in Tenerife in Spain and something very unusual, a very unusual kind of earthquake has been detected that lets many to believe well, is the risk greater than the scientists previously thought? Because that's a specific kind of earthquake that in a such a high magnitude, and in my video I say magnitude 2.2, but they have increased it now to 2.4, has never ever been detected at Tenerife in that magnitude. Don't forget, that's a volcano, right? So that's a, a, a significant magnitude to look at, especially if it's that kind of mysterious earthquake. So click the link in the end screen, guys. I hope to see you there in a second. And if you want to support the channel, link is in the description or click the join button, click the supers and click here. Thank you. See you there.